Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to prove that the derivative of the sine inverse function is what we said it was when we started working with those a little bit a few days ago. All right, so the main idea here is that we want to use things that we already know about derivatives of other functions or definitions that can lead us to this being the derivative. One of the things that we're going to start with is just by letting y equal the function we're going to try to find the derivative of. Okay, and then since this is an inverse function, there are a couple of ways that we can go here, but I'm actually just going to use the idea of what it means to have an inverse function. So the sine inverse function is the inverse of the sine function. So if I apply the sine function to both sides of the equation here, so sine of y, then that should still be equal to sine of sine inverse x. So I just applied the sine function to both sides of the equation. And the whole idea with a function and its inverse is that they undo each other. So that's what we have on the right side of the equation. So we can then rewrite this step as sine of y equals x. Okay, so we've now rewritten this in terms of a function we already know the derivative of. We know the derivative of the sine function is cosine. We proved that by using the limit definition of the derivative and some special limits in the middle there. I want to find dy dx though. Remember that in my original uh, statement here I have y equals sine inverse of x, so what I really want is dy dx. And what I have here is an equation that's not solved for y. But we now have some strategies for how to handle differentiating a function that's not solved for y. So we're going to use implicit differentiation here. So I'm going to just apply, I'm going to do it in a bright color here so we're clear about what's happening. I'm going to just apply that differential operator to both sides of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to apply that ddx to both sides of the equation. So what I'm really doing here is implicit differentiation. All right, so then on the left, uh, if I just differentiate implicitly on the left here, the derivative of sine is cosine, and then times the derivative of what's inside and the derivative on the right side is just going to be 1. And then I can solve for dy dx. Okay, so here I have the derivative of y, which was our sine inverse function, but uh, the expression I have here is in terms of y, and we're supposed to prove that the derivative is this expression in terms of x. So at this point, uh, I'm almost where I need to go. I need to use either some trig identities, or sometimes people use the right triangle and some symmetry arguments to show that this expression can be rewritten as what we were trying to prove. So I'm going to go over here to the side and do a little kind of separate work and then go back to what I have written here already. All right, so at the beginning of the problem here, we have y equals sine inverse of x. So one of the important things to remember about the inverse trig functions is that there are some restrictions on inputs and outputs of those. The sine inverse function, I'm drawing a little picture of a unit circle here. The sine inverse function outputs angles that are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So one thing that we're going to need uh, as we kind of do some of this work is that that y that's here in the original statement and also the y that's down here will have to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's part of the definition of the sine inverse function uh, so that it's actually a function. Another thing that I'm going to need to use is a Pythagorean identity. And so there are lots of ways you could write the Pythagorean identity with thetas or uh, whatever symbol you want to use for angles. I'm going to use y here. Um, but if I just remember Pythagorean identity, That says sine squared of y plus cosine squared of y equals 1. So that's just Pythagorean identity written with y as the angle. Um, so I'm going to use that uh, to try to rewrite my expression and what I'm trying to prove here uh, in terms of x's. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is solve this Pythagorean identity for cosine of y. So I'm going to subtract the sine squared from both sides. So I have cosine squared of y equals 1 minus sine squared of y. And then if I square root both sides of that, I get cosine of y equals plus or minus 
square root of 1 minus sine squared of y. Okay, and technically, algebraically, I have plus or minus there. However, remember that the y had to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, or if you think about the unit circle on the right half of the unit circle. So on the right half of the unit circle, cosine is positive. So really, for the restriction that we have in this problem, although algebraically, when I solve Pythagorean identity, I have the plus or minus square root because of the angles where y is, for our restriction, for negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the y, the angles here, the cosine will be positive. So I don't have the minus in front of the radical there. 1 minus sine squared y. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what I was working on over here and I'm going to replace that denominator with uh, my work from Pythagorean identity. So I'll have square root of 1 minus sine squared of y, which looks a little more complicated, but at least I have the root and the denominator that I was after. All right, and then I just have really one more step here before I'm done. Uh, if I go back to a step in the middle of the problem here, I have an expression where I have x equals sine of y. So if I just replace that, uh, x in place of sine of y in the last step that I have written down here at the bottom, I get what I was after here. So in place of the sine of y, I'm putting x from this step I circled in the middle of the work. And there we get dy dx equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so we've done our proof QED. All right, I have another video where we're going to prove that for another inverse trig function. Kind of the same idea, just different uh, steps in the middle and a different identity to use.